This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2015. To my immediate right is Dan Doherty, Business Development Manager for Snail Games. I hope I got that title right. Excuse me, Business Development Director. See, yeah. you, got, you got promoted in the interview, I, I you did. see. It's wonderful, it's wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us. Tell us about Snail Games. My pleasure, Neil. Thank you for being here first. Um, Snail Games was founded in the year 2000 as a browser development company in China. Um, they've had many, many successful hits in the browser world, such as Ministries of War, Heroes of Gaia, Bounty Bay. In 2007, they saw a need for a growing, expansive video game with 3D Engine, so they created an engine and launched a game called The Age of Wushu. The Age of Wushu is a worldwide phenomenon in the, in the entertainment industry for MMOs, and it is still active and aggressively played by over five million users every month today. Um, Snail, at that same time, started to notice what we're seeing here in the U.S., and that is that the video game market is changing. And it's changing rapidly, and not necessarily for the good. Um, the hardware that's available is defining our, our video game experience because you need to have money to produce video games. That means the econo economics of video game development and publishing has to be there. And, and while independent games are great and they, they're absolutely the core of our industry, uh, it takes a lot of money to develop a black ops for the first time. For the 10th time, maybe not so much. But for the first time, it takes a lot of commitment and a lot of money to create that game. And you can only do that if you're available on one of the given platforms, or you can try and go the mobile gaming route, which is like getting hit by lightning twice. So... How so? How is it how getting so? lightning? Um, because on the Google Apps Store, Google Play, there's over 100,000 active gaming apps. Imagine your competition being the size of a small city, and there's two of you guys that just wrote a wonderful game. How are you going to get the world to see this device when there's 100,000 more of them out there? It's very, very difficult. Um, it, it's wonderful, and there's always a place for, for independent gaming, and it needs to be there and it needs to be developed. I'm in complete agreement. But we also need to have those big, wonderful, encompassing games available in the mobile market that used to be there when the Game Boy and the, the Sony Vita, when, when they were available and, and there were a lot of produced content for those devices. Well, that changed when Apple launched the iPhone. The iPhone was able to play games. And all of a sudden, the casual games started migrating very rapidly to the mobile devices. And then all of a sudden, a lot of people started writing games for the mobile devices. And then less Game Boys started being sold, and less Vitas started being sold. And now the only games you can find for Vita and for DS are written by Sony and Nintendo. And everybody writes games for Android and for Apple, but you can't find them unless you get struck by lightning a million times, and then all of a sudden, you're in Angry Birds, or you're chopping fruits, or any one of the other casual games, playing candy, however, um, that's all wonderful. They all have a, a good place in video gaming. But what's been pushed out is the core video gamer. He no longer has a place in mobile gaming because the games that we used to play in on the Vita and the, the DS are no longer being published. Not for those devices, and the hardware doesn't support them in the other devices, so they're not available. So that's why we created this device. Hold it up so people can see us. This device, which is, this is the premier flagship device, which is a gaming cell phone. This is a 2.2 gigahertz, three and a half, I'm sorry, five and a half inch screen, 1080i, 3D eye tracking phone. So when you say 3D, stereoscopic 3D. Stereoscopic 3D, it tracks your eyes, sets up the distance and the parallax for your eyes at your distance that you're playing, and now you have a 3D experience on your phone, high def. Okay, wonderful. And this is a parallax barrier, I take it? Yes, it is. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's a wonderful developed product, and I think you're going to see a lot more of this type of 3D coming out and available in the market today. Um, it, it still needs a lot more content to drive the, the 3D side, but you don't have to have 3D turned on. You can also turn the 3D off and just enjoy straight 1080i video streaming or game playing or whatever it is you do on your Android device. So remind me, is, is this device available on the market today or is it getting ready for release? How far along are you with this? This product will be launched in Q2 in China. 
in Q3 in North America. The, the other hardware will follow the exact same route as this um, and, and should follow the same timing as well. Now, when we're talking about the other hardware, are you talking about the platform connected yes. to the 3D television? What can, you, what can you tell me about that? Um, it's a wonderful product. And, and what's, what makes this interesting makes that incredibly interesting. Because the games that, that you're developing for this, now I can do them in high def. Now they don't have to be low quality video games anymore. Now I don't have to just do candy games and chopping fruit and all of that stuff. I can now play action video games on my phone. I can take that exact same game because I'm now running on a two gigahertz machine. I can move it to the O-Box. The O-Box is a 2.0 to 2.2 gigahertz machine driven by the NVIDIA K1 processor and it is capable of, of streaming video at 4K in 3D. It is a screaming box. It's the most advanced Android box available on the market and, and will be out this year. So it has 4K resolution support? Absolutely. And it's got enough processing power to, to make that work? Absolutely. And I noticed that it's got stereoscopic 3D support as well? Absolutely. The, so, go, so go ahead. Um, in, in addition to this, what, what you even more unique about this box is it's a modular design because all of the video gaming content using subscribers, it's the box isn't just about video games. Yes, it helps video games, but it, it's about content management. You can stream videos. It's in, Remember, it's an Android device. Anything that you can do on your phone, like stream videos, YouTube, Netflix, whatever you do on your phone today, you can do on that box today, only you can do it in 4K. Nobody else does 4K for Android today. So I noticed that both the mobile device as well as the desktop device or the living room device are both supporting stereoscopic 3D. In fact, you're making a point to show everything in 3D. Yes, we do. What, is there a strategic importance to stereoscopic 3D content for you? We, we believe the market will continue to adopt 3D. Um, and, and the ability to, to drive it is, is just simply a technological advantage. And we believe developing technology at our core will help us as a company stay at the very forefront of what we're doing. Yes, we do we have products available that, are, that run without 3D. Um, you can even turn 3D off on our phone so that you don't consume your battery life. But you can still have the high definition that's required. Um, we think it's a, a, a technology that has to be challenged and has to be driven. And if the content comes to support it, it, it there is a, an advantage to playing in 3D. Now, you have a competitive advantage in that through, I mean, through your, your games. I mean, you mentioned the game, I think you've got four to five million subscribers, am I correct? That's correct. So when these platforms are released, I, I, I take it you're going to want other developers to adopt the hardware as well. You're going to need content above We're your own. with a lot of them. That's correct. In fact, there'll be a major announcement here at CES on Tuesday with one of the largest mobile game developers in the world. Okay, so are you confident that when the device is readily available, there will be a lot of content ready for purchase as well? I'm absolutely positive. I've spoken to many, many very large multinational developers and publishers. Um, every single company I've talked to has shown interest in developing products because remember, most of them do Android products today. They just don't do it as well as they could. And do, do you know if they're going to support stereoscopic 3D as well? Um, you know, the, the, the jury's really out. That's going to be a choice of the publisher and the game that they're producing. Some games, there's not an inherent advantage to 3D. It's just a flashy thing to, to show. Um, but in other games, there's a real advantage to the depth and the content. And really, what, what needs to be driven in video gaming is you need to become engrossed. And, and video games today, yes, Black Ops is engrossing. There's no doubt about it. But Candy Crush, I don't care what you tell me. It's not engrossing. I, I, I love it. My wife is on like level 400. And, and all of that is great. And, and it's a unique niche for Candy Crush. But it's not what could be done here. And that's what we're trying to provide. So remind me, what are the price points for the mobile device as well as the, the desktop? They are not announced at this point. We, w we will be incredibly competitive in all tiers. The Obox, because of its nature of being modular, each retailer is likely to select a different set of options, so the devices will be priced according to the options that they purchase. The mobile de devices, we simply have not announced a price point yet, 
um, really because of market demand. Now, in the case, what's this called, by the way? This is called the W3D. It has a little brother called the W. It's a half an inch smaller, it runs at 2.0, and it does not have 3D. So in the case of the W3D, is it a phone as well, or strictly a gaming device? Absolutely, it's a high-end cell phone with the same kind of specs as you would expect from any leading device on the market today. So you have 2.2 gigahertz, you, you have a 13 gigapixel and megapixel camera. It has dual slim. It's set up for 64 gigabytes of uh, SD memory. Yeah, I mean, it, it just goes on and on. It is a cell phone, but really, it's so much more. And do you know, is it going to be marketed as like an unlocked product, or do you see it marketed with the wireless providers, like major US wireless providers? At this time, our intent is to market it as a fully unlocked product to the US market. Good, very good. Is it going to be in Canada? It will be in Canada. It will be in Mexico. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Always good to see stuff like this on the show floor. Um, this is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES Unveiled. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you. Thank you for watching.